This is my wife, Andrea, and together we've been renovating a 1960s fixer and turning it into an absolutely gorgeous home. In today's video, Andrea will be attempting one of the most industrious and transformative projects of this entire renovation, and that is to build a high-end custom fireplace for the living room. Welcome to the adventures of my DIY wife and her non-handy husband. This is our living room, but it hasn't always looked like this. When we bought our house three years ago, this room was dark, dingy, and dated, but with new flooring, paint, and some furniture and decor, we were really able to transform this room into a space that our family loves to be in. But as beautiful as this room is, it's always felt like it's missing something really important. This room is massive, and while I love a lot of the individual design elements that I've added to it, a lot of it just felt disconnected or like it's competing to be the main focal point. I've had this idea for several years now to build this large fireplace that will act as the main focal point of this room. My theory has been that having a focal point that fits the scale of this large room will really help ground and anchor everything else on it, making it feel more cohesive and cozy even though the space is so massive. So after years of dreaming this up in my mind, we were finally ready to make it happen in real life. But before we dive in, we want to thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, or just get lost in creativity. You can take classes on drawing and painting, filming and video editing, and there's even classes on business and marketing. I will be checking out Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success course as I do all of the production here on our channel and I wanna grow those skills. Skillshare classes are curated specifically for learning. That means that there's no ads so you can stay focused and they're always launching new premium classes so you can take your creative skills to the next level. If you're interested in taking classes on Skillshare, be sure to check out the link in our description as the first thousand people to use that link will get a free month on Skillshare. I started out by removing the old mantle to give myself a blank slate for planning. Next, I use some painter's tape to outline my idea on the wall. This just really helped me get a better visual on the size and the angles and make sure I liked the way everything was looking. Once I had the tape placed where I liked it, I was able to measure and do a quick sketch on a piece of paper so I could figure out how much wood I was going to need. Once I had all my measurements and materials list, we were ready to head to Lowe's and get this project started. Wait, wait, wait. Do you feel that? Yeah, it's like 75 degrees and 90% <gasps> humidity. 90% humidity. Like a lukewarm sauna. Oh, it's amazing. It's Texas fall is it's just gorgeous. To cool off. We're having a cold front, cold front in a couple of days. Should get down into the lower 70s, I would guess. Mm -hmm. We're just getting the wood for the frame. That's what we're gonna be working on today. 
I did a rough sketch just to see about how much we need. Hopefully I'm not too off in my estimations. All right, so Andrea says that she left something inside, so I'm gonna load it all myself. Uh, I don't know if I believe her, but we're gonna get it done anyways. Okay, we are testing the limits of a min man's ability, that's for sure. How much can your minivan hold? Look who decided to show back up. Hey, who needs a truck when you got a minivan? I mean, shoot. That's what minivans are made for. I mean, look at that. Construction vehicles. It's not only for carrying children. If they can, if they can handle children, they can handle all. Of it's true. Once I made my initial cuts, the fireplace practically built itself. Okay, not really, but it didn't take too terribly long. Once I had some of the initial framing done, I started working on the arch. Before we started on any of the framing, we held up a piece of half inch plywood and traced the shape of the arch onto that so I could replicate the exact shape of the arch that was there. Next, I cut the sides and the top down so it would fit within the framing that I'd already built and then traced this shape onto a second piece of plywood so I could have two matching shapes. Once I finished cutting out the arches, I made pocket holes on both sides so that I could attach it to the framework. Next, I measured the depth of the fireplace so I could continue building the arch. After I assembled part of the arch, I got Dean's help to help hold it in place while I attach it. After we got the arch on, I took a step back and it was really exciting to see it finally start to take shape. Next, I grabbed one of my young apprentices to help drill the pocket hole so we could finish framing this arch. Teach you how to build. And you can build a house. This is the house that she built for him. Yesterday, he was like, "It's hot in the sawdust. It's warm." And I said, "That's because of friction." He said, "We should, we should get rid of all the friction, <laughs> so it's not hot."
After I finished constructing the arch, I moved on to the mantle. I decided to use two by 10 boards and before I cut it, we brought it inside so I could get a visual and figure out how much of an overhang I wanted. so long. It's funny to see it. I stop it and stare and like, whoa, so what? That's what I do with you. Stop and stare. Oh. But before we attach the mantle pieces, I went ahead and used screws that are made for masonry and concrete to attach the entire thing to the brick wall. Then I was ready to cut and attach the mantle pieces. As the day wore on, it was finally time to start framing the top portion of the fireplace. The trickiest part of getting the top portion started was figuring out the correct angles for these sideboards. At this point, it was getting late and so we decided to call it a day and get a fresh start in the morning. The next day started bright and early with a Lowe's trip and I was feeling pretty tired so I just decided to use the force to make things easier. Once Dean got the extra wood and I had finished my coffee, we were ready to finish framing out this fireplace. Since I knew we would be hanging a frame TV on here, I added a couple of extra vertical supports so I would be sure to hit at least one of the studs when we added the mounting bracket. I wanted the underside of the mantle to have a slight curve and so I added these boards to help facilitate that. Next, I used a piece of quarter inch plywood to create a solid back on the arch for the fire rock to attach to later. I just feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. Once I finished the framing, it was so fun to take a step back and see this vision really coming to life and it was already really changing the way this room feels. Well, it's looking good. I just want to know, where do you come up with this stuff? This is what my brain does. I've been building this for about two and a half years in my head. I would just like you all to take a seat with us right here and, and just look at this wall with us for a while. <laughs> because this is what we've done many a times, what she's done many, many of times. 
I really feel like it's already doing its job. Like this whole space just feels more cohesive because it has now like a really solid anchor and focal point that just really grounds everything. So even though it's kind of a mess already, I'm like, okay, this is doing just what I wanted it to. And it looks awesome. I want y'all to get the scale of this. Like this is not a small thing. Like I'm six feet tall. Well, you're crushing it so far and I have a lot of confidence in you that you're gonna be able to do this thing out and it's gonna look insanely good. Keep it going, next phase, go! Before starting on the drywall, I had another little project I wanted to knock out. Our TV used to sit on top of our piano, but we had plans of moving it and so I needed something prettier to take its place. My sister had this old dresser mirror that she let me have and I love the unique shape of it, but just wanted to change up the color slightly. I used a gel stain over the existing finish so I could keep the wood look, but just darken it up a bit. As Andrea finished up the mirror, it was my turn to go to Lowe's and get some fire rock to sheet rock out this fireplace. The only problem is that fire rock comes in four by eight sheets and that does not fit in our minivan. So I went through this magic portal to turn my minivan into a truck. This stuff is super heavy, but I tried to keep a good attitude about it. Once I had purchased the fire rock, I had to load it by myself into the back of the truck and the only problem with that is that each sheet weighs about 7,432 pounds, but I hulked it, got it into the back of the truck and you can bet that I slept good that night. The next day was bright and beautiful and it was an exciting day because our man Ernest was coming in to start on drywall. And you'll hear us say drywall or sheetrock occasionally, but what we really use for this is 5 8 fire rock. Our fireplace is a gas fireplace and it doesn't put out much heat, but we wanted to be extra safe and use the thicker fire rock for this. We decided to hire out this part because even though I have installed drywall before, I knew that Ernest would do this about 10 times faster than me and it would look better in the end. And we've worked with Ernest before and he does amazing work and we just really like him. As you can see here, we ended up having to remove those wood blocks that I put underneath the mantle because that idea just wasn't going to work. We ended up landing on a different technique to get that subtle curve that I wanted. That night after Ernest finished with the drywalling, we spent a romantic evening together looking at different TV sizes on the couch. Okay, I was really excited though because I have been dreaming of getting a frame TV for years now because when you're not using it, it looks a lot like artwork and I just love the idea of not having a giant black box being the focal point of our living room. Once the TV arrived, it was simply a matter of opening it up and following the instructions to install the mounting hardware. At this point, I went ahead and cut the hole in the side for the access door and then the hole in the front to feed the TV wire through. The access door allows us to get to the gas to turn the fireplace on and also makes a really convenient spot to hide the one connect box for the TV. Next, it was time to prime, and I just grabbed a PVA primer from Lowe's and had them tint it to the same color as the top coat I'd be using. Thank you. 
And this part was so exciting because we were finally getting to see what this whole thing was going to look like finished. Like we're in like some new build of a house, you know, right? Like, and I'm going like, holy cow, I built that, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with myself right now. It's looking so good. I'm like, you're the real deal. Like, you're the oh, real? real deal, babe. All right, I found you these pro shovels. That'll do. After that, Andrea decided that she wanted to clean out the fireplace, put some new rocks in it, paint the whole thing, and just give it a whole new fresh look. For one of the final finishing touches, I applied Roma and clay to get the look of an aged plaster. Now, this is a really subtle detail and it's probably even harder to see on this screen, but this really just adds a bit of softness and depth and texture to what would have otherwise been a pretty plain drywall surface. After finishing off the Roma and clay, I had a little idea to make the TV look even more like artwork. I decided to build a custom wooden frame to go around the TV. To build my custom frame, I started out by measuring the TV and then building this box out of one by two pine boards that would fit around the TV with about an eighth of an inch extra on each side. Then I cut some smaller trim pieces and attached those inside this box that I just built. This part will cover up the existing black frame on the TV. After I had it all assembled, we brought it inside just to make sure that it fit. I used some paint that I already had on hand to give this a coat of black paint, do some light distressing, and then cover those areas in stain. I also realized I still needed to cut out a small area on the bottom of the frame where the sensor sticks out under the TV. And yes, we did double check to make sure the remote still worked with this being covered up. Next, we brought the frame inside, set it on the TV, and I realized the color was just not quite right. I sprayed the entire frame with some gold spray paint and then brushed over that with some watered down black paint for a really nice antique look. In the end, I love the color and I really love how this actually makes it look like a piece of framed artwork on the fireplace. And then the last thing I had to do to finish off this fireplace was to install quarter rounds around the bottom.
Once I finished installing the quarter rounds, it was time to get the living room cleaned up and we were finally able to take a step back and really take in the finished result. And I cannot believe how beautiful this fireplace turned out. <laughs> absolutely amazing and I think it's easily one of the most transformative projects you've ever done in our house it just looks incredible yeah we were talking earlier and I said I think this might actually be my favorite project that we've ever done I don't know that I can fairly compare it to like our kitchen necessarily but as far as like most impactful and like really changing a space like one thing yes this is like incredible. This has been an idea in my head for like three years, and right? Like three years ago, I was taping it up on the wall and I just had this vision of like it really helping to ground and anchor this space because it is such a massive room. And I'd be doing like our piano wall and the shelves and stuff and it just felt like everything was competing to be like the focal point, like all these small things. And I was like, we just need like one big thing to really anchor the furniture and everything around it and we finished it and I feel like it's 10 times better than it was in my yes. head and like yes. which is such a good feeling and it looks so good well that's it for today's project again it's one of our absolute favorite projects and we have more incredible home projects coming up that we're really excited about so we would highly encourage you to stick around if you want to see Andrea do more incredible <laughs> things that I can't do <laughs> then stick around and uh, we'll catch you in the next video Tired. Why are you always tired? <laughs> Here, drink some coffee. It's not working. <laughs> we'll drink more coffee. Yes. Oh. oh. Staring at this. Staring, staring at, at it. it. <laughs> Woo! Do you believe it looks marvelous, don't you? I'm just thinking. What if we like drink coffee? No, I, we both talk with our hands. We're on coffee. <laughs> <everywhere>. <laughs> This is my favorite! Oh, okay. sorry, babe. Hey. You can call that. both talk with our hands. Oh, I talk a lot with you my do hands. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. This really thing looks off on amazing. Me. This, I was like, man, he's really into what I'm saying. Yeah. Keep talking. He's like really into me. He's really smiling at me. Hey, could I get you a number after we're done? Here? No. no. <sighs> okay. Oh, you just have like a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What the heck is this line on my chest? Was, has that been ah! <laughs> Look at that. All I can think about is my first year at a new school in sixth grade and having to lip sync a song in front of everybody and it was like absolutely traumatizing. <laughs> I forever hated that drama was... after that oh. and singing in front of people. That's probably what did it. Probably so. That yes. happened in sixth grade. She still talks about that story of having well. to lip sync a song in front of her entire class. <laughs> so up until this day, I still have never really heard Stop. her sing. That's it's true. Maybe that's because you sing so loud. It's because whatever we're singing with, my voice just blends so perfectly with it. I'm just <laughs> that good. She... I want you to do it for Maybe me and for problem. everyone <laughs> yeah, right, right now. <laughs> Would you pay Andrea $500? No, no, no. Sing? I said a large sum of money. Would you pay okay. Andrea $5,000 to sing a really popular song? And <laughs> even we... then, I don't honestly think she would do it for $5,000. Okay, we can stop. We can okay, stop. zoom in. I'm the feeling microphone a little bit embarrassed. On. Stop. I got an idea. Babe, can, let's be done and move on. No, I think we're on to something here. Name the tune. What do you want to sing? <laughs> Alright, so what song are we doing? No, let's be done and move on. I woke up singing that this morning. That's Dean's song. How about you sing for us? Roll clip of that this song morning. for just like 10 seconds. Sunlight catches my tears A rainbow promise appears natural. 
Joe. Music joke. Nope. What do you call it when you push minor and a piano off a cliff? A flat minor. Whoa! Oh, that is huge! It's, it's so good! It's 